on camera now. So here we go. Take out your notes from yesterday. If anyone knows Spencer Davis, if you can get his computer programs off of his calculator onto your calculator, you can do almost every problem in this class. Him, I can't, David something, Steve's best friend, I don't know, they're a couple years old, Spencer's. Anyway, they programmed every possible AP thing in their calculators. All right. Yeah. You do. It's not that bad, but if you've never done it, it is sort of tricky. Okay, here we go. Most of you did the video by now, and almost everyone got this problem wrong, which I don't know why it was such a butt kicker, but it was. Tell your lab part of what the answer is right now. All right. Here you go. You ready? The answer is six. But the guess does count. The guess counts. But it still counts, whether you like it or not. I'm sorry. Your guess does count because if it's not there, then you think the other one was your guess. But it wasn't. Your last one was your guess. Okay, here we go. Here's a little flow chart. That means, is there a decimal in the number? That's what that's shorthand for. Is there a decimal in the number? Yes. Zeros at the end count. If the answer is no, zeros at the end don't count. Do zeros at a start of a number ever matter? Never, ever, ever. So we don't have to worry about that. And then anything that's not a zero, that always counts. I'm seeing a vision of my son, Dallin, in four years, right there. He spent like $300 on Rubik's Cubes this summer. Some of them are the hardest things I've ever seen in my life. He has a cube that has different cubes in it. And he can do it like, you are so weird. Anyway, right there. It's actually not that hard. Eat it. I can't even do a two by two. Four by four. What's it called? Two by two. Thank you. All right, here we go. This may or may not help you. But looking at this. Okay, me too. So the question was, does this number have a decimal? Yes. Zeros at the end count. One, two, three, four, five, six is the answer here. Over 80% of you put five. Yeah, Liam. They both count. Any, any, there could be a hundred and they would count. Okay. Yes. Sandwiches always count. So if we get rid of the decimal, this number is 120050. This is the only number you wouldn't count as a sig fig. Zeros between two non zeros always count. Even if there's a thousand of them. Okay. Let's move. Is this about where we were yesterday? Okay, well, this is where we are. Once again, I'm recommending you use the two-column note style where you put the rule and the practice, then the rule and the practice. The top box here is for addition and subtraction rules because they're different. The bottom left box is for multiplication and division. 
you you really need these rules or at least to understand them 100%. So take a minute and write these down. I'm going to pause this. Okay, these two rules are not equal in their importance. You will use this rule about 1% of the time in this class and this one 99% of the time in this class. We don't add things very often, but we multiply and divide things quite a bit. So make sure you're good on this one for sure. We will teach both though. So when addition or subtraction is performed, answers are rounded to the least significant decimal place. What that means is you come up and you see which number has the fewest number of decimal places in it. And that would be this five. There's one, one decimal place here. There's three here. So what you do, you do the math, 44.750, that's the math, correct? And then you say, all right, this is the least significant, so I have to round that value, and we round a 5, that makes this a what? An 8. You okay with that? What was the impressive, the 7 to an 8? Didn't you ever cheat post? What? Good for you. Um, okay, well, uh, I won't go into detail, but you can make almost any number look like any number. <laughs> don't worry about it, Diane. You don't cheat either, but some of us know. All right. That rule is not super complicated, so we're not going to spend a ton of time on it. You find the one with the least number of decimal places, and your answer is reported to that decimal. Okay. Multiplication and division, we're going to do a little bit longer and a lot more practice problems. So, when multiplication or division is performed, answers are rounded to the number of digits that corresponds to the least number of sig figs in any of the numbers used in the calculation. So that's why yesterday we said it's important to be able to, to determine the number of sig figs in a, in a number. Or the amount of sig figs. So here we go. 16.85 has four sig figs, right? Two has how many? One. The smaller of the two values is the one. So my answer has to be reported with only one significant figure. Will you tell your lab partner why 30 does not have two significant figures? All right. That's good. I heard... I heard the word decimal a lot, and that's the right answer. If there's no decimal, the zero at the end doesn't count. So the only sig fig here is the three. That is one. Okay. Then, and I know it's the same math. I did that on purpose. So don't think, oh, he's an idiot. All right. Same math. Now, 16.85, it has four. This one now has two sig figs. So now your answer is two sig figs long, and 34 is a more accurate answer than 30. Question? Okay. So far, okay? Which part confused you? What's that? No. I could put a decimal there. It wouldn't matter. I could, but... I'm not going to put a zero, though. There are four sig figs here. One, two here. Sorry. Okay, now, how many sig figs? Still four. How many here? Three, because there is a decimal, so the end of the twos count. All right, so my answer has to be the one that's smaller. Three, 33.7. Good. You will please notice... As my measuring tool got more precise, so did my answer. We're like, hey, it's around 30. I use a more precise tool. I know it's 34. I use an even more precise tool. And now I know it's really 33.7. What's that? Yeah, in your side tools. That's what I was telling these boys earlier. You can type it in using that, and it will give you the right answer, right? Okay. Yeah. It has to be a calculator that has side tools in it. 
So do you have one of these? Okay, here. You hit apps and go to side tools. All right. Yeah, it's there. I want you to get a calculator that will do all this crap. I don't think it's cheating. I think it's smart. It's the TI-84 or higher, I think, has them. The TI-83 might not have the memory to hold it. I don't think you can buy those anymore anyway. I, I grew up with TI 79s and 82s. Will you give me a thumbs up if you're sort of okay with this so far? Especially with a calculator. Okay, we're going to do some practice problems. Here we go. Will you do these three problems on your own and then look at your partners and compare answers? And this class, we take forever to do things. We're going to try and hurry. I'm going to give you two minutes to do these three problems. Hopefully this went okay. Uh, if it did it, well, we'll get it. 18.84 is what the calculator will tell you when you do that, right? I did that right, didn't I? Okay, so that's the math answer, but it's not the science answer. We look, there are three sig figs in this number. There is only one in this number. So my answer can only have how many? One. One. So it's this place, which means I round the 18, and it rounds to 20. Diane, that's when you walked in yesterday, and you're like, how? Do you get it now? Okay. Thumbs up if you understand how that became a 20. Is that very accurate? No, but this measurement is not very accurate either. It's not reported accurately, at least. So I can't really say it's 18.84 because I don't know because I don't know this to the hundredths place, so I can't put my answer to the hundredths place. All right. Next, you type this in your calculator, you get three, but that is not your answer. How many sig figs in this number? Three, because there is a decimal. How many in this one? Four, because there is a decimal. So my answer has to be three sig figs, which is 3.00. Math-wise, it's the same number. Science-wise, it's super different. All right. This, I'm not, like, the answer is just 24.3050, but how many sig figs here? Six. How many here? Three. So my answer can only have three, and a zero rounds down, so it is just 24.3. Raise your hands if you had them right. Do you get it though, Hales? Yes, I do. Okay, now we're going to apply it in an actual problem. So, density. So, we're going to do the actual density equations, and at the end, we will apply the sig fig rules to our answers. I want to do this one problem at a time. So I'm going to give you 90 seconds to do problem number one. Oh, I thought I selected it. It's not going to work. All right, so I put the density equation into this circle. You are not required to do that. I just put it because I think it's helpful. It says, what is the volume? So to use the circle, remember, you cover up the thing you want to solve for, and it will leave you with the expression, mass over density. That's, I, I think it's the easiest thing on the planet to do. But if you don't want it, don't use it. I don't care. I'm going to take my mass, which is 16.58. And I'm going to divide it by the density. I think I said volume, but whatever. I'm going to divide it by the density. So I'm not going to rewrite that. I'll just put 3.185 on the bottom. And then I hit enter. Does anyone have the, what their calculator told them the answer was? Well, one person, one person. Diane, go. So 
sweet. And we don't want to ever write an answer that way. We're going to follow the rules for sig figs. So this is multiplication or division. So we find the number with the fewest. They both have the same amount of sig figs, and that is how many? Four. So I round my answer. One, two, three, four. I round that five, and if there's a six to its right, it rounds to what? A six. 5.206. Raise your hands if you have that right. Okay, that's pretty good progress. All right, now, the next one is significantly harder because that's how things work. This one involves conversion factors. All right, it gives you this one, that there are 453.6 grams in one pound. The other conversion you have to use is for every liter, there are 1,000 milliliters. I typically would just do that automatically as I write the number down, because you just move the decimal three places. And then I would do the conversion into pounds at the very end. Take two minutes and give that your very best shot. That's pretty good. Wow. That's like half off. It is. Okay, here we go. This is very similar to a problem on the test, so be prepared for it. It's like exactly the same, just different numbers. Same process. So here we go. The first thing, if we're solving for pounds, that's the mass, correct? Which is, don't tell a physics teacher that, he would punch me. But whatever, that's mass. So mass is equal to D times V, first off. Now, it's just one, so it's not super hard, but it's, uh, we also have to convert if it's liters, but this unit is in milliliters, we have to take care of that in the math. So you did it in your head, so I'm going to write it out. It's 9.562 grams per milliliter. And I need to multiply, because these two are next to each other, times the volume, which was 1.0, well, sorry, I'm converting it to 1,000 milliliters. Now, those cancel milliliters out, and I'll be left with grams, which is good, because I have a conversion between grams and a pound. All right. So I take this, and it's just simply 9.562 grams. So far, that wasn't the worst thing we've done. Now I have to convert, and I'm going to use a process that we're going to end up using a lot. Well, I know. I don't know. I rewrote the same number because I'm an idiot. That, Thank you. That's the answer we're looking for. Okay, now I'm going to use what we call a picket fence. And If you don't do this yet, it's fine, but you will want to. A picket fence, we take the number and the unit that's given, and we put it right there. That word says given, I promise. And then we use the conversion factor in this step. And we take the thing that's given and put it on the bottom. And the thing that's wanted, and we're talking unit, not thing. We put the wanted one on top. Because look, math-wise, if I have a unit on top and a unit on bottom, what happens to them? They cancel out. So then I'm left with just the unit I want. So we're going to take this right here, 9 five, six, two grams. That's the unit and number that I was given. And then I'm going to take the conversion factor and put it in. The unit I was given is grams. And what's the number for my thing? All right. Four, five, three point six. And that is per every what? One pound, and pounds are LBs for some reason, I don't know. And then the unit of grams disappears. I'm left with LBs, which is what I want, so I'm ready to go. 
It's this number divided by that will be my answer. And then we'll do the sig figs. Yes. You'll have to. But, but Kaylin, we're going to end up with picket fences like this this year. And there's no way you can do it in your head. So we're going to start easy and we'll build it up. All right, and most of you don't know what she's talking about, but she does. Oh, crap. Oh, crap, whatever. All right, now, when you get this answer, what was the math answer? Anyone have it still? That's what the calculator says. But then I go back up to my problem, and I find the least sig figs in a number, and it was the 1.00 liter. So that's how many sig figs? Three. So I have to round to that place. So the answer is 21.1 pounds. This is a ton of fun, right? It, but you got the right answer? That's fine. Awesomer. <laughs> it is. Okay, I'll take that. And we round because the tools we use aren't very accurate. Okay. We have one more practice problem. Or is it two? Five minutes. Okay, density again, find your number and do it. And like we have been the whole time, we're about 15 minutes late, so we'll have to test on Tuesday. That's good and bad. I won't be here Monday, but you'll have a recording of me going over the last bit. Well, the test has those same 50 elements on it. And after we're just calling that good. You you still have to do it on the test. It should be good though. It's 50 pretty easy points. All right, give this a